I'm an historian, an infiltrated octogon. In this video, I will transmit to you all who exactly is America's, England's, Australia's and Canada's enemy, what his name is and from where they rule. So I would recommend both politically left-wing and right-wing minded people to watch this film through, through to the very end. Because here, I will reveal your mutual enemy you both have in common. My first video, The Pharaoh Show, I made 10 years ago in 2007, publishing it three years later in 2010. This here is my English version of my French film, La Bête Suisse, Base du Diable. In German, Das Schweizer Beast, Basis Lager des Teufels already seen by hundreds of thousands. My name is Sean Ross from South Africa and I'd like to drop a complaint at the state's attorney of any state against the Swiss state and the entire Swiss people for the financing and organization of World War II, for the responsibility for the genocides on the Jews, the Gypsies and the Russians and ordered by the Octagon Secret Society from Switzerland. A complaint for the hidden and camouflaged anti-Semitism of the Swiss state, complaint for the financing of the terrorist attacks in America, London, Canada and Australia, all of them ordered by the Swiss Altaqua Bank. And a complaint against the Swiss state for financing and organizing the left-wing terrorism in Germany by the Rote Armee Fraktion, the RAF and Baden Meinhof group attacking US army barracks, US institutions in Germany and even US discos leaving many US citizens dead all from behind the screens organized by the Swiss Octogon and their sleeper agent Erich Honecker, the head of the German Stasi who came from the Swiss Palatines or Swiss Tsar in Germany it is known now uh, and how the Swiss and the Stasi trained, uh, financed and furnished weapons to the German left-wing terrorists in order to attack US and Israeli targets, all orchestrated from the motherland in the Alps. And I'd like to be taken in any state's protection program because my life and those of my family and our three children are in serious acute danger because of the numerous murder threats by the Swiss Nazis, the same powerful Swiss organization that already financed Adolf Hitler by the Swiss general and Octogon member Ulrich Willem and organized the Islam of fascism after the war by Swiss Octogon's great eminences, François Junot and Hans Ahmed Huber al Swissri. It's a long story and I need a safe place to write it all down for you in detail with names and dates. This, what I've already started on my YouTube channels, Gure and Chatsafrats, and for which the Swiss Nazis kidnapped me on July the 16th, 2015, against a ransom of 20,000 Swiss francs because of my YouTube videos in which I've tried to warn the US, Britain, Canada and Australia for coming terrorist attacks and in which the Swiss were very successful to silence me up through the rept. A time in which I was heavily tortured through code O2T oxygen deprivation in several Swiss torture detention centers for political prisoners. In the internet you can read about it in the Zurich files as you can see here and about the torture on political prisoners in Switzerland by oxygen deprivation. It's very clean, you know, it's very Swiss, there's no proofs, it's neutral, no blood. I'd need your help to make those complaints in a court of law in any state. You can contact me on my email address in the description. And now the story. I was there years ago when Swiss industrials discussed the US future and those of Britain, Canada and Australia, when Swiss Octogon 
of the Nazi Templars and sole victor of the Second World War, decided false flag terrorist attacks in Paris, London and Berlin, where Paris is still called Per Isis, Per Isis, by its members, meaning the House of Isis, like in a royal house or royal lineage of the wid widow. And several times, I tried to warn British and US authorities for the Swiss danger by letters, emails, by means of videos and three official complaints in several French courthouses. On February 11, 2014, Bologne-sur-Mer, March 24, 2014, in Mende, and April 25, 2016, in Saint-Étienne. And in 2009, the US Embassy in Bern, Switzerland, even called the Swiss Nazi police to have me arrested, poked with the butt of a machine pistol in my stomach, spending hours in a Swiss police station afterwards. Now, we're 2018 and four years passed since my first complaint and still no answer, no phone call, no email, no letter, absolutely nothing. And with my information, the tragedies of Paris, Nice, Berlin, London, etc. could have been avoided and the Swiss octagon arrested. Because I knew that they would hit on a Friday 13th in Paris, because on exactly this date, the French king, Philip the Fair, had all the Templars arrested in the Kingdom of France on Friday the 13th of October in 1307. And exactly because of this, the Swiss and the Octogon Nazi Templars still hate France and the French to this very day. But only 16 years before, the Knights Templars had already founded Switzerland on August the 1st, 1291, in the very last year of the Crusades, because they saw the problems coming at them. Only 325 Templars were rounded up and tens of thousands of them made it to their new base in the Alps. Therefore, the first day in August, the day upon which the Templars founded Switzerland, is the national holiday of the Swiss. All have a day off, no one works, shops are closed and fireworks in Templar style lit in the air. Kaboom! It's Templars Day in Switzerland. The last year of the Crusades was 1291, and the last Templar stronghold called Acres fell on May 18, 1291. And just two and a half months later, the sheer time to get back in the Alps, the Knights Templars founded their Scion in the Alps on August the 1st, 1291. The ruins of Acres now lie in the north of Israel. And when looking at the Swiss flag, one can see it has the very same red and white Templars colors. A simplified Templars cross on the only flag in the world that is a square with four equal length. This is the cross of the Hospitallers, like a Swiss white cross on a red underground. Because when the Templars went underground in 1291, all of a sudden, the Hospitalis simultaneously popped up again to control the vast Templars' properties and wealth, thus the Swiss cross. So before and at the beginning of the Crusades, the Hospitalis were there, who went over into the military Templars during the Crusades to become the business-minded Hospitalis again after the Crusades. Still the same ones, merely changing jackets and inversing crosses and collars. So the pre-crusade hospitalers are in fact the predecessors of the Red Cross. The Red Cross is supposed to heal, but it is in fact a corrupted Swiss spy organization bearing the Red Cross of the Templars, just switching colors throughout history. Therefore, on the famous Swiss army knife, one can witness a real coat of arms of the Knights Templars, and why in fact those two colors, red and white, 
on the Swiss template flag. What's the deeper meaning behind that? The pharaohs of ancient Egypt had two kingdoms, Upper Egypt in the south called the Berhet, in Demotic, or pharaoh's written language, which means the White House wearing a white crown, and for Lower Egypt, in the north, in Demotic, Bertasser, the Red House, with a red crown on Pharaoh's head. Yes, exactly. It's because of this that the US president in Washington DC presides in the White House with a huge obelisk and symbol of the Pharaonic domination in the backyard next to it. Accordingly, the white Pharaonic house were the heretic pharaohs of the New World Order and the Red Pharaonic House, the original Old World Order of the Pharaonic Primogenitura. Equally, the Demotic Per for House also forms the etymology for Paris. In the old Pharaonic form, Per Isis, used for the House of Isis, which is not a house to live in, nor the Big Pyramid, as mainstream historians were taught at the university. No, it's a royal house or royal lineage, just like the pharaonic per a, from which the etymology for the very word pharaoh derived from meaning the big house, which once more is not the pyramid taught by the mainstream history school, but the worldwide grand royal house and global web of pharaoh's bloodlines. And because the real aim of the Crusades were the pyramids of Egypt, out of which the Knights Templars got their Templars treasure, being them the notorious grave robbers, and therefore the name Freemason. Freemason. Thus, giving the two colours, red and white, of the United Kingdom of Pharaoh to their Templars logo, a red cross presenting a two-dimensional pyramid, as you can see here, on a white flag or garment, and in the end, to the red and white base in the Alps. Only inversed as a white cross on a red underground, and represents the Hospitalis, an extremely wealthy business organization into which the Templars partially emerged and disappeared. These two red and white pharaonic kingdoms were in a constant state of strife and war until at a certain point they decided to make peace with each other in order to conquer the world together and with this goal in mind founded the United Kingdom of Pharaoh with the red and white crowns worn together in one single red and white crown. This is the uh, specific reason for former German uniforms to be white, British red and the French blue, the traditional royal colours of Pharaoh. And because the Templars are true descendants of the Pharaohs, which I will explain more later on, arrived back from the Crusades in Europe, they said, this here will be our neutral base, which will never be involved in any wars so we can keep all our valuables and all our gold, money and documents in safety. Where all the NGOs and instruments of global rule of the new pharaonic system will be, like the Red Cross, the United Nations, the World Trade Organization, the Olympic Games, the OMS for the doctors and even the FIFA and UEFA for soccer, football, all highly corrupted by Swissy the International Ice Hockey Federation, etc. You name it, it's all there. Neutral Switzerland, not for us the people. Not neutral for us, but only for our pharaonic masters, feudal aristocratic lords who always keep their peace talks between warring nations by their as presidents camouflage feudal lords in Geneva, the diplomatic capital of the world, and their own base there where this horrible CERN lays. 
This pharaonic world elite also sends their offspring to some rich boarding school in the motherland, their base, like in Montreux, Stadt, Lausanne, etc. Even Dr. Mengele did so. There was also a third crown of Pharaoh, the Blue War Crown, and it's therefore they're all for pharaohs, warring, colonial and imperialist nations have these three pharaonic colors of the three crowns in their flags, blue, white and red, like France, England, UK, the Netherlands, America, USA and Russia. Red and white, the United Kingdom of Pharaoh, and original colors of the flags of England and France, and blue for war, surely because Pharaoh's nobility has blue blood. Like the blue helmets of Pharaoh's New World Order, United Nations, for the war, para bellum. Like Pharaoh's blue war crown, and afterwards in the same Geneva as the UN, the Geneva peace talks in Pharaoh's red and white neutral base. Templars actually were no monks who defended fine Christian valors against these horrible Muslims in Jerusalem. But Templars were aristocracy's noblemen, every single one of them. Pharaoh's European nobility has this typical harsh law of succession amongst each other according to which only the firstborn son or primogenitor has the sole right or divine right to it all, the castle, the power, the land and the first right use prime noctis on all women in the area to rape the European women on the first night of their marriage. <clears throat> and for the second, third, fourth sons there was nothing, nothing at all. That's why there were perpetual fights at the court for the succession. And even two poor uh, second, third, fourth sons aristocrats, they even had to share one horse. There were conspiracies, poisonings, or a dagger in the back in some murky corner of the castle. So for these sons, second, third, fourth born, the nobility's tradition foresaw the refusal sometimes rather hide in a monastery. And in the Middle Ages, there were only three things, the castle, the church, and the people. And a nobleman most certainly does not mingle among the commoners, because there you have to work up to your neck into the cow shit every day. And a nobleman does not work. At a certain moment there were so many aristocratic descendants without power, without money, nor a castle, living in monasteries and temple of God. They started to call themselves Templars. And created their logo of two poor aristocrats without a kingdom, even sharing one single horse and selling it to the people as to brave monk warriors in the service of Christ, vowing total poverty and obedience to Christ, saying amongst themselves, we also are aristocratic descendants of Pharaoh, and we want our own kingdom, but for a kingdom you need money. So for the military backup, they told those stupid Europeans that out there in Jerusalem, a certain Jesus lives with his grandmother and needs to be saved from the Saracens. If not, God would smite all with fire from hell, provoking the end of the world. Just like a thousand years later, Saddam Hussein would have had weapons of mass destruction, threatening the entire world and humanity as a whole. It came out in the end, all lies by Colin Powell and his spells. Same technique, same tactics, same liars. During the Crusades, Jerusalem was just the gateway to the real goal, the pyramids of Egypt. Just as the Templars do not owe their name from Solomon's Temple in Jerusalem. A symbol for the Jews who even today still bang their heads against the walls of King Solomon's Temple to honor this aristocratic ruler, not of Jewish, but Pharaonic descent.
religious dogmatism without understanding leads to wall bangers and where we probably have the word Bible bangers from. And at this same place, the Crusaders, under Templar command, the latter, so the Templars, of same Pharaonic origin, just as the not very Jew, King Solomon. In the year 1099, during the First Crusade, on the same day, July 14th, of the French national holiday, remembering the French Revolution and beginning of the French New World Order, these crusaders were ordered to commit a gruesome massacre commanded by the Knights Templars on Jews, Muslims and even Christians. Just as the Swiss Nazi Templars repeated this during the Nazi era. The real goal of the Crusades was Egypt and the treasures of their ancestors in the pyramids, which became the notorious Templars treasure, which they took to the Imperium in the Alps with which they founded the Swiss banks. As a matter of fact, history teaches us that the Templars were the banks of Europe in the Middle Ages. They were the world's first real bankers who invented the Czech. And that's why later on in history, the Swiss banks collaborated with the Nazis. Because the Nazis were the Templars, who both did the same things, steal, murder, lie, collect wealth and search for the Holy Grail and the Ark of the Covenant. So at the very same time in 1291, when these extremely powerful, wealthy and the world's first multinational just vanished from the face of the earth into nowhere, so the Templars I mean, at the very same time a couple of simple Swiss peasants suddenly rose against the extremely powerful Austro-Hungarian Empire of Habsburg and using perfect military skills never seen before. Now isn't that funny, eh? De facto, or in fact, the outcome of the entire Crusader campaign was decided in and by the large quantity of available Arab soldiers and where Saladin or Salahedin was the caliph of or king of Egypt, so to speak. And this is why Saladin, the aristocrat from direct Pharaoh's bloodline, has led the Crusaders go free in the reconquest of Jerusalem in 1187, October the 2nd, and spared all lives, where eyewitnesses of the time confirm how priests had their donkeys fully loaded. Well, yeah, this was the notorious Templar's treasure. And those priests, in fact, the Templars, are not because Saladin, the warlord, had such a noble character, but because he was initiated into the worldwide aristocratic internal conspiracy of the new system of ruling or new world order. He, in fact, let them all go and with them all their belongings. Oh my, isn't that generous in a 200 year war upon life or death? Jerusalem was just a temporary safe house of the Templars treasure, no more than that. And the Temple of the Templars was not Solomon's temple in Jerusalem, but just a monastery and God's temple. Not one in particular, but many all over France and all over Europe. And Saladin was a New World Order traitor, lying to his subjects and conspiring with his European aristocratic brothers of his own Per A people in another geostrategical war around Pharaoh's treasure, just like the ones today for the opium in Afghanistan and the oil in Iraq, Syria, Libya and the rest. Dear Muslim people, the enemy is not the white man who suffered even more than you. 2,000 years of war by this aristocracy, Caesar's genocide on the European peoples, massacres by the Romans, king torturing the white men and raping white women, two devastating world wars leaving millions of white men, women and their children dead, all by the hand of Pharaoh, the enemy within. And look here how the, the, the German emperor here says, 
William II, king of Germany, who killed, who murdered m millions of Germans. How they give presents among each other here to Saladin, Salah, Salah Hedin. And um, they, they were conspiring together. Wakey, wakey. It's the same aristocracy, you know, the king of Morocco, the emperor or the... Um, the king of Saudi Arabia, the Emirates, they're all, they're all friends with the European aristocracy and we die. Arab people die, Turkish people die, European people die, German, English, the Franks, and they live. Wake up, everybody. Yeah, look at it. This is a, a marble tomb, tomb. You know, they're, they're all pals. It was given by the German emperor to the um, to uh, Salah Hedin. And... Uh, afterwards of course you see here the sun hieroglyph here see my film the pharaoh show they're all a bunch of pharaohs and they have us kill each other i make a lot of good encounters with muslims they're not the enemy uh, they're of course they're not all good you know but um uh, they're not the enemy uh, a lot of muslims they help me they feed me they take me hitchhiking turks and arabs i have no problem with them just like um, Cassius Clay, the boxer, said, I have no problems with the Viet Cong. The white man is indeed the biggest victim in the entire history because he dared to fight back in a way no other race has ever done. But they fight us from within, like a cancer or a virus, and they look like us now and talk like us through the use prime noctis, the rape of our women where they injected their pharaonic genetics like into our women. Yeah, look, this is what they did in my country, South Africa. Concentration camps, killing 28,000 children and, uh, because they couldn't win the war. And this was Lord Kitchener, an aristocrat, and Lord Winston Churchill, born in Blenheim Palace, the son of a duke. It's all pharaohs, and they kill us. You know, that's the enemy. They're on all key positions, like the police is a foreign occupying army pretending to be from our ranks, which they are not. And they gather and conspire against us in their secret societies. In 1291, after the Crusades, the Templars' treasure, the Knights Templars and the aristocracy all made it safely back to Europe. While the ordinary Crusader foot soldiers like the Franks, the English and other Germanic warriors were as usually betrayed by their leaders and all perished in the desert sand. And at the same time, back in Europe, the women stood back alone without protection because the man didn't come back anymore. Then two Swiss inquisitors called Heinrich Kramer from Mulhouse, in those days belonging to Switzerland, and Jacobus Sprenger from Basel in 1486 wrote and published a book called The Malius Maleficarum, or The Witch's Hammer, in order to burn the remaining good women of Europe at the stakes, the loyal women who refused to collaborate with the lords of evil. They stood defenseless against Swiss mercenaries roaming all over Europe, who later became the Swiss guard of the the Pope's guard of the Vatican. This is why the burnings of so-called witches took their highest toll near the Swiss border, like in German, German towns like Bamberg, Würzburg, Nuremberg, all according to plan and meticulously executed like a Swiss watch and initiated by the Pope's letter of January 20th, 1260 just before the end of the Crusades, in 1291, the founding of the Swiss base, and the Pope ordering to start imprisoning and torturing European women who didn't want to collaborate with the masters, while their men were sent into the desert sand without water to make sure they wouldn't make it back to Europe to defend their women and save them from the stakes of the Swiss Inquisition. As the Spanish, they never burned any women. Same technique repeated by Napoleon and Hitler to send French and German soldiers into the Russian winter without warm clothes and without sufficient food supply to make sure they wouldn't come back, creating either sand mummies during the Crusades or show mummies, snow mummies in the Second World War or by Napoleon. 
And when the Templars of Pharaonic origin came into Switzerland, they were talking French and called the place Suisse, Suisse, for Sœur d'Isis, the sisters of Isis. Also, because traditionally French has always been, and still is, the language of the entire European nobility, even in Germany, Poland, England, Russia, the Netherlands, everywhere. This is why later on French became the diplomatic language, with the diplomatic centre, Geneva, of course, their motherland. The pharaohs of ancient Egypt have never disappeared, and their actual base is Switzerland, nice, and central in the middle of it all, on the water tab and money tab of Europe, and where they talk four different languages for bringing havoc to Europe in four wind directions. Those who speak German to the north and infiltrate the Germans, French into France in the west, Italian into Italy, south, and retro romantic to the east. Oh, very smart indeed. Well, the Templars were the first multinationals in history, and this is the result. They are based in the Alps, stretching out in all directions, being the cause of the CIA and NATO's compass showing north, west, south and east. As Switzerland operates in all directions, linguistically, financially, militarily, militarily you name it. And they're all Templar organizations, you know, the... Um, the NATO and the, um, the Central Intelligence, the first uh, director and all these directors, there was Swiss, Allen Dulles, Templar stuff. So CIA, NATO, they're all octagon Templar organization from Switzerland. In the Bible, the Quran and the Torah, it says that Pharaoh and his army drowned and disappeared in the sea. But hey guys, that doesn't mean they all disappeared. There was only one you're talking about. But they had sons, daughters, cousins and uncles. What about them, silly? And what about all the other pharaohs we know? We know there were more than one. There was Akhenaton, Ramses the Great, Tut Tutankhamon, Cleopatra and hundreds more. What about them bunch then? Okay, let me explain it to you. Of course, the sea didn't just open up just like uh, that and swallows them like a predator. It's a metaphor, as these books are full of. In the Bible, the sea is symbolic for the sea of peoples. So Pharaoh disappeared into the sea of peoples. They are amongst us and so mixed with us that we cannot, cannot even recognize them anymore. And neither can they. That's why they need secret handshakes and secret symbols to recognize each other and secret societies to get to know each other. And this is why more than 50% of the Europeans carry the pharaonic DNA in their blood, which has been discovered around 2009. In Switzerland, that's more than 90%. But of course, the, uh, the prostitutes of the uh, mainstream media, they turned it the other way around. And they say that the, um, here, like here in the newspaper, that the, um, uh, the pharaohs that come from Europe. But no, they injected their pharaonic genetics into our women. I will explain it to you. And when the pharaohs came to Europe, they built castles everywhere to conquer Europe and the Europeans. So, they became the aristocracy with their blue blood and blue for the war. Because of them, we have wars without end throughout history. Reminds you, there are no castles in Europe before the year 1000. And there are no European kings from us, the white people. There is not such a thing as an original European king. It's all imports from Egypt and forced upon our lives through terror rape, bloodshed, wars, and many lies and deceit. Wake up, people, and see Pharaoh with their blue aristocratic blood threshing down into humanity. Castles from the year thousands are extremely rare. So roughly speaking, there were no castles from before the year thousand, and there were not no aristocrats from before the year thousands. There were there, there was no nobility before the year thousand. 
So where did they all come from all of a sudden, eh? Well, we know who the builders are with their pyramids, viaducts and squares and compasses, don't we know? Not even 100 years ago, it was still perfectly clear that everything belonged to the aristocracy, the nobility, the land, the power, and even our women through the first rite of the Jus Primae Noctis, the bride having her first night after the wedding with the lord in his royal bed in the castle. That's why so many Swissies have that cold pharaonic genetics running through their veins, meaning that the aristocracy are the descendants of Pharaoh, who injected their pharaonic genetics into the whole of our women on that first night, if you know what I mean. Or do you really think that the aristocracy just left it all 100 years ago and just gave all the power on earth away to some politicians and their police state? Nah. And like Pharaoh and the aristocracy, today's ruling elite still don't talk with us and still only marry amongst themselves. Because it's still the same bloodline, just changing jackets. And because there were too many uprisings, especially in Russia and France, the aristocracy decided to entirely rule through secret Freemason lodges. Yes, affirmative. All today's politicians are both Freemasons and aristocrats and descendants of Pharaoh. It's because of that that Freemasons worship these cult objects of their ancestors from ancient Egypt, like obelisks, pyramids, the all-seeing eye, Horus, etc. The entire ancestral tradition. As a fact, more and more descendants of Pharaoh were born over the years in the various castles of Europe, who all wanted to be the king, thus leading to various wars between kings, castles and royal lineages, fights about kings who wanted to stay king forever, pass the kingship down to their children and all descendants ever after. There were more and more Tsar, Sir, Sires and Pharaohs who all wanted to be the king. And that's why one war followed up the other, in which the normal man, we, only let his life and do the wars for them, as on a chessboard, therefore the Freemason checkerboard configuration. At a certain point, they agreed it couldn't go on like this any longer and constantly destroying it all. There had to come a new system, a system in which any one of them could be the king for a period of four, five or seven years. And so democracy, the hidden feudal system was born. But who's going to vote because none of us, none of us is neutral, they said. Well, let's create a sort of circus in which we let the people vote or the demos in Greek. The people will vote in a sort of rotating dictatorship in which all the political candidates are pure Tsar and pharaonic nobility, who in fact, when voted for, radiate this air of personal happiness, because they just got elected to be the king and pharaoh for a period of four years. Democracy is their cynical word, meaning that the people rules. <laughs> That's why there are the Bilderberger on all controlling internal organization, which already existed during the times of kings, but under another name, to solve the in internal troubles of these pharaohs amongst themselves. Problems like succession and world domination. The latter they call with a euphemist expression, globalization, a soft expression for world domination in pharaonic. Equally representing this new system called the New World Order, executed through Freemasonry, through which any of them can become the king for a period of four, five or seven years. But who's gonna vote? A member asked. Oh, let's have the people vote, another said, because they're so dumb and stupid and will never understand anything. And at the same time, we make them think that the people are ruling, like that we keep them happy, satisfied and peaceful. But in fact, democracy is not for and by the people, but for our rulers, so they can be elected democratically, 
and as soon as they're elected, they'll do what they please anyway. So there is no self-government by the people, and there never has been any either. And so democracy was born out of the aristocracy, a new feudal system with a thin layer of gentlemen's camouflage, altogether ruling from a thing they've cynic cynically called parliament, etymologically from the French parlement, from parler et mentir, to talk and to lie. It's all straight in our faces, parlement. And Switzerland is the oldest new world order democracy in the world. So let's get to the bottom of it. If there is a new world order, then logically there should have been a predecessor called the old world order. Otherwise there wouldn't be a new one, right? So what is this old world order then? Well, that's the old feudal system of kings, queens, princes and princesses following the system of the firstborn or primogenitor. And out of the Templars with their Swiss base were born Freemasonry and their new world order, consequently to solve their internal wars of the old world order, like the persecutions of the Templars by the French king Philip the Fair, who refused to surrender his reign and throne to the new system called New World Order, also entitling second, third and fourth sons to power. This is why the Templars of the New World Order and their Swiss mercenaries were in La Bastille in Paris, where they tortured French citizens and terrorized the French people through hunger, inflicting famine and, per and persecution to provoke the revolution, so the people would rise against the monarch to finish off the Old World Order. And so it happened in 1793, three years uh, or four years after the French Revolution, when the French King Louis XVI lost his head and the Queen too, two heads in the basket. The same happened in Russia barely 100 years later with the Tsar family. Same technique applied. Never in history there has been a revolution by the people, but they were a transition from the old world order to the new world order. And the slogan, liberty, equality and fraternity, not for us, the people in the promising new era, because we're still the slaves of our feudal lords. Fraternity to end the fight between the king's son, who should be brothers. And this is why a Freemason lodge is called a fraternity. Equality amongst the king's sons and no more primogenitor, more rights to the firstborn than to the others. And liberty, so all brothers and king's sons have the liberty to become the king for a period of four years. This is why the French Masons gave the Statue of Liberty to the US, being the first nation after Switzerland to obtain the New World Order in 1776, and just 13 years before the French in 1789. And think of the 13 stripes in the flag, folks. Well, there are more reasons for that as well. The old world order is what is called a vertical rule, where the king or pharaoh decides straight down to the people and the very lowest on the ladder. Whereas the new world order is a horizontal rule in which they all rule together in a parliament, the Congress, the Senate. And this is, for instance, why Mr. Trump cannot just do what he wants because there still is the state, the Senate and Congress to favor his actions. And this is why Trump will never be able to fulfill all his empty promises, which he never even intended to fulfill anyway. This is how the New World Order horizontal rule functions. And this is why the Swiss flag has a vertical line cut in half by a horizontal line in transparent white on a blood red underground. It's the symbol of the new world order, if you like.
The new world order is Freemason horizontal rule, a new system of the kings, who have the logo of the pyramid, which is the square and compass, because the square is at 90 degrees, with which you can make a square or base of a pyramid, which stands for the number four, as there are four corners or four lines in a square. So here you can see this one here is the square and it stands at 90 degrees so with 90 degrees you can make like here the base of the pyramid which has one two three four corners or four so it stands for the number four the square the compass stands at 60 degrees with which you can make a triangle or side of a pyramid having three times 60 degrees corners and three lines so representing the number three you see here is the compass it stands at 60 degrees almost the same as here this here so it's not entirely but uh, so with this thing here you can make a six, 60 60 60 degree pyramid so that's the side of a pyramid so with this thing you can make in fact a pyramid three plus four so four plus three makes seven the holy number of pharaoh and the pyramid therefore the seventh letter of the alphabet is a g and positioned between the square and compass the symbol of a pyramid by pharaoh's descendants the freemasons who in the higher degrees are all royals of pharaoh's nobility and their new horizontal system of the new world order and uh, in the new world order we all must carry an identity card with our personal slave number on it and when the uniformed king's knights knock on the window of your car papers please then this is a slave control like a farmer controls his cows and if you refuse they'll take you out of circulation as they say it the name America is fully pharaonic, as I've explained to you in my film The Pharaoh Show eight years ago. A good name for a New World Order nation. So the Americans thought to abolish the rule of the British monarchy, royals, old world order. In fact, they just got a new system in return. The New World Order horizontal rule. A, it means big or pregnant. Me, mer or meru is the word for a pyramid. Ri, the sun, like the sun god, Re, or Ra, or Amun Ra, and Ka is the soul when alive, all in Demotic, the written language of Pharaoh. Read from right to left, it means the reincarnation, A, of the big pyramid, Me, will take place where our souls, Ka, will live under the sun, Ri, America, Amerika. And there she is, the reincarnation of the big pyramid on the dollar. It's been said that Amerigo Vespucci discovered America. But you don't call a street, land or town after one's first name, do you know? Logically, it should be the United States of Vespucci and the Vespuccians. But it isn't the case. So they lie, as always. So I filmed the, um, the Novus Ordo Seclorum here in france in normandy at the beaches of uh, of omaha beach so we all died for the new world order initially in these freemason lodges they said in latin that a chicken is not a bird and a woman no human because they're all fraternities being the essence of a fraternity and why fraternities because the um the, they were the sons of the kings and through the use prime noctis, you know, when they raped their women, they made an alliance with many women. So that's why we got here. But they, of course, these pharaohs, they don't give the same power to our women. The French king never understood why until his head rolled into the basket because they lied to him, telling him that the people were happy, had enough to eat and were dancing in the streets. It was a conspiracy where he never could have gotten out. 
And because of it all, and this fine liberty, we all have to carry an ID with a personal slave number on it. And if the king's knights in their shiny uniforms of the New World Order knock on the window of your car and order you to show it, you have no other option than doing so. Because it's a slave control, just as a farmer checks out his cows. And you see, the man, he is... He is incredibly enslaved he can't see he, he can't move and the women is outside why because they have a um, an alliance with the masters they want to have the power and they gave him the power because the evil one he knows that the woman can't see the danger she's like a little bird you know that needs twigs for the nest that's why it shows the, the child as well this guy must have been a freemason and one of them a pharaoh the one who painted it here because he knows it and this is actually the story of adam and eve and she has an alliance with the snake you know watch this film of mine on my, on the same channel here about the snake and our masters here this is the alliance the women have this is the story of Adam and Eve and it couldn't be written otherwise in the Bible. You know, it has to be written symbolically, but people don't understand it. And here you can see why the snake, these are our masters, the snake. And also Jesus, he's from a line of pharaohs. He's from the, the house of David, the kings, the aristocracy, the nobility who are pharaohs. And he didn't like it, you know, like Lady Diana or John F. Kennedy, so they stand up. And uh, well, she didn't have any choice because her own clan didn't want her anymore, so she had to choose us. And um, this is the snake. This is Adam and Eve. This, this is what the story is about. I guess these ones here um, won't make that alliance with the, uh, the pharaohs, and they will stay loyal to their husbands. And that's why Pharaoh's going to kill them. They're going to, just as they did with the Jews, they're going to wake up in a concentration camp. And to my opinion, well, it's not my culture. I'm not a Muslim. But to my opinion, they, these women still look like women. Not like the European women with their hormone pills who don't even look like women anymore. They don't behave like women. We are lost, yeah. Right after the French Revolution, Freemason Napoleon came with a hidden hand under his jacket, a Freemason sign and spreading the new world's order all over Europe through massive wars, abolishing the nobility out of the people's eye as a distractive maneuver. In reality, they went underground and disappear within the sea of peoples once more. This is why there is the hidden hand they hide everything and they disappear this is how the templars little by little infiltrated the french and later on the u.s society with the help of swiss mercenaries and the templars command who are now on the highest key positions of france the u.s with one million swiss americans and in fact the entire world like swiss manuel valls and former prime minister of france Marine Le Pen of the Front National openly showing a Swiss flag, saying she wants a Swiss system in France. Well, not bad for a French nationalist, eh? To identify, identify yourself with a flag of a foreign nation. And look, even the Prime Minister, no, not the Prime Minister, the, uh, the Foreign Minister of uh, the UK, Boris Johnson, he's of Swiss descent. The Swiss, they came uh, over the Palatines, just like Trump and Obama. They came to England and the US. And the woman was a nobleman, of, a part of the, a member of the nobility. The, I mean, the, uh, the mummy. Watch all my videos on my YouTube channels, Gure and Chatsifrat, for further proofs. It's all there. Just think of the Vatican Swiss Guard and their bloody history butchering the defenseless. Oh yeah, that's what Swiss is good at. And in 1831, because of these fine Swiss qualities, the French Foreign Legion was also founded by the Swiss, with their first leading commander, the Swiss Colonel von Stoffel, of pure Templar descent, of course, and under the French king, who had lived most of his life in Switzerland. 
just like Mussolini, Lenin, Marshall, Pétain, Rudolf Hess, Mengele, etc. They all lived in Switzerland for a big part of their lives and where they got taught and instructed by the Swiss Brotherhood of Evil. Watch this film, it explains a lot. The symbol of the pharaonic dignity par excellence is the lion or the sphinx. And therefore, an aristocratic coat of arms is always held by two lions, each on either side, or one or two lions at the entrance of a castle. But there never were any lions in Europe. This means that in the UK and the American, Australian, Canadian and New Zealand colonies, a foreign power has always ruled. Because we in Europe have wolves and bears and no lions. Uh, this is the coat of arms of Sweden with the three crowns for Isis, Horus and Sets. It's always three. And um, of course there were no lions in Sweden. I mean it's too cold. A lion has to lie in the sun and do nothing. Just as their counterparts of the nobility of Pharaoh. Lie in the sun and do, and do nothing. And how knew the aristocrats in the Middle Ages at all about the existence of some lion? Well, the average Englishman or other European didn't even know what was happening on the other side of the hill at the end of the valley. And I even filmed medieval castles in Europe, France, like this one here, with huge obelisks and symbol of the pharaonic domination in the backyard. Just like at the White House, the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. And still the same thing going on everywhere. How did they know at all what an obelisk was in the deep Middle Ages, if not the entire aristocracy and nobility were descendants of Pharaoh? Well, anyway, they were and still are not homegrown European aristocrats who had never seen anything else than good old damp and cold northern lands. Let me tell you that for sure. There are no European kings, queens, princes, princesses, dukes, earls, marquises, barons and counts, and there never were either. They're all import from Egypt of the pharaohs, who never drowned themselves in the, into the Red Sea either. They're here, folks. They are the war makers, our lords, generals, presidents, and Switzerland is their base of evil. Now look at this here. What do you think this is? Eh? Well, it's a pyramid with the world domination on it. A crown. They're all pharaohs. They're not from here. When I translate ri, as in aristocracy, aristocracy, or the Aryans, Ari on. In German, that's Arier, the Aryans. In Demotic, when I translate that in Demotic, which is the written language of Pharaoh, then A, it means big or pregnant. And when a woman is pregnant, that's quite big. And Ri is the sun. As the sun god, Re, Ra, or Amun Ra. So Ari means pregnant sun. That they've come from the sun and were born up there, these pharaonic sun worships, worshippers who call themselves Aria, Arians. That they've descended from the heavens and are not from here. And when focusing the complexity of their works, like the pyramids, their superior knowledge, and the sly and utter ruthless way of dominating humanity, well, then it should be clear. Why they have as such and see themselves as the superior race standing over us, where in demotic language of Pharaoh, aristocracy and Aryan are one and the same thing. My dear Muslim brothers, my dear right wing nationalists, and my dear ultra left wingers, the enemy are not the Jews, as the Swiss Templar Nazis want to make us believe. But the enemy of the US, the UK and the entire Anglo-Saxon world are the pharaohs and pharaohs aristocracy with their main base Switzerland of the Nazi Templars. It is pharaoh, the evil of and scourge of humanity, testified in the Quran, in the Bible and in the Torah as the incarnation of evil and abundantly written about. 
and Pharaoh will put Europe's Muslims into very high-tech concentration camps, just as the Swiss did with the Jews during World War II. Just watch the history of Europe for yourselves and who always ruled. There was always these blokes in their castles with knights, dungeons and torture chambers. Did you see any Jews then? Who sort of like those in Jerusalem were banging their heads on the walls of some European castles as they preferably follow this tradition in their spare time during the weekend? No, not really, did we? Now, let's have a closer look at this and at this Sarkozy geezer, former president of France, who is a Jew from his mother's side by his mother, André Mala, a Greek Jewess. Okay, clear case after the Ju Judaic laws, mother Jew, real Jew boy. But it's not as simple as that, because Sarkozy also is also a real aristocrat from his father's side, and even descending from a bloodline of true Hungarian kings, with a real Sarkozy family royal coat of arms held by two lines on each side and all that. Now, what then is he supposed to be first? a Jew or an aristocrat? Well, an aristocrat before all, of course. And Jews also have kings, like King David or King Solomon, just like us. It would be the same as asking Prince Charles of Windsor, Gotha Coburg, if he's English or an aristocrat first. Of course, he would eloquently avoid the question and just think by himself, Oh, these awkward questions are getting more and more stupid by the day. English, that's the commoners, isn't it? And while they play football, or how do you call it again in the colonies? As indeed soccer. Not so far away. No, that's sport, I meant. Not the colony. And so it is for Sarkozy. He's first an aristocrat of royal pharaoh and long time after that a Jew, and even more time after that a Frenchman, without a single drop of French blood. And that's why Sar Cozy has the Sar part in his name. First of all, that's an abbreviation for Son, Son Altesse Royale, S-A-R, meaning His Royal Highness, and which is the official title of Prince Charles, the Duke Henri, of Luxembourg, etc. Sa. You see too, Sa, le prince royal, the royal prince. Thus calling themselves, because in the demotic language of Pharaoh, Sar means a king, as in a sarcophagus, sarcophagus, a box to put the king in when he's dead, the king box, so to speak, or as in Sar. The King of Rome, where etymologically the German word Kaiser for an emperor is from. Furthermore, the Tsar or Tsar from Russia, Nebuchadnezzar, the King of Babylon, the British royal family Windsor, original Tsar, or you pronounce it Windsor, Windsor, and Tsar Cozy, the King of France, for seven or five years because seven is the number of the pyramid. Oh, he looks a bit like Mr. Putin, doesn't he? Those are all Sars or Pharaoh kings from which also derive the words sire or sir, yes sir, no sir, like in Sir Winston Churchill, who was born in Blen Blenheim Palace, his father a duke, all from Sar. This is why in posh upper class British, the word sir has to be pronounced Sar and not sir, yes sir, to show one's solid origins. Without exception, this global elite put their money, or rather our money in fact, their tax evasion, in their red and white United Kingdom of Pharaoh, Switzerland. Like 80 billion French euros every year, 100 billion German euros annually, or 450 billion US dollars that annually end up in Switzerland. Because throughout history, the aristocracy nobility never paid any taxes, but it's them finally who invented taxes so they could parasite on the backs of, 
some starving people while they partied at the court of the castle with our women food to scoff and beverage for the fun all taxed together <laughs>